looking around this, the sporting news today and uh, trying to figure out what the big story was. I think the biggest story, anybody that knows sports, uh, knows it's in baseball uh, right now. The commissioner of Major League Baseball, if you didn't see this, headline Park Avenue, corporate shakeup, corporate shakeup at baseball. Now, it's not going to happen for a couple of years, but if you didn't hear it, and maybe not, I know that the top of the hour here, we didn't tell you because well, there's reasons for that. But the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manford, has given you a gift. He has given me a gift, although it's a delayed gift. The Weasley commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manford, announced that he is finally going to leave and end his reign of terror. It will be coming to an end. We know when the Grim Reaper of baseball will be leaving. Rob Manford will quit his post. He's going to age out, thank God. January of 2029, there'll be a new commissioner in 2029. It seems like a far, a far road to get to, but we, we're in 2024, so it's, it's not that far away. So let us discuss the question. What do you make of the announcement that Rob Manford, he has a plan to exit Major League Baseball? So I've got rap sheet, cell phone plan, and retail therapy. And we will combine all of these things together, and uh, we are going to make Cool Whip, which is what Rob Manford is when it comes to any real punishment. Uh, before we get into the meat of it, though, here is the, the audio from Rob Manford making the announcement. Just to prove I am not making this up, here is the soon-to-be former commissioner. It can't happen soon enough. Here's uh, Rob Manford. Look, I'm 65, okay? I just started a five-year term. Do that math, right? That makes me 70 years old. You can only have so much fun um, in one lifetime. Um, I have been open with them about the fact that this is going to be my last term. You know, I said it before to them before the election in July, and I'm absolutely committed to that. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's having fun. Uh, he's not good at his job at all. But what do you make? Again, what do you make of Rob Manford's exit strategy? So to lead off here, this exit cannot happen fast enough. Rob Manford is a schmuck, all right? He is an absolute schmuck. Nobody has done more to embarrass the sport of baseball in recent years than this guy. He's the COC of Major League Baseball, the chief operating clown. And if the owners had a clue, we know they don't because they just care about revenue. Rob Manford will sell anything. Right? He'll sell anything. He doesn't care about the quality of the product. He will sell anything. By the way, was that age thing a reference to analytics? Was he referencing the analytics? Uh, but the, the owners should get rid of this guy quicker. They, if, if I'm in charge, Rob Manford is gone warp speed. We're getting rid of him warp speed. So uh, have him take an early retirement. And once you, He's a lame duck anyway. It's kind of like politics. And when you have someone in political office that cannot run for re-election again, they, they're termed out, they are the most dangerous person out there, right? Because they can just do whatever the hell they want. They don't have to worry about getting votes. Well, Rob Manford, he was already dangerous before this. But let me give you the rap sheet on Bozo the commissioner. His list of offenses under the Rob Manford reign of terror and who knows what's, what's going to be on this by the time we get to 2029. Rob Manford has helped pull apart the rich tradition of minor league baseball. Uh, people don't talk about this very much, but under his watch, he oversaw the removal of hundreds of minor league baseball teams in Podunk, USA. Anything for a buck. That's another mantra for Rob Manford. The quality of the product does not matter. To watch your team on the weekends. Friday, it's on one channel. Saturday, it's on another. Sunday, it's on another. you got to have 479 different streaming and cable packages to watch all of your team's games. The quality of the big league uniforms, that's the big story recently here, has gone to absolute crap with the Fanatics deal. How many times has Rob Manford spoken after World Series and sounded like he's inebriated while talking after a World Series? There was that infamous photo of, of Manford a couple years back working on his golf swing hours before canceling opening day and a work stoppage. He was worried about his, his seven iron. Yeah. There's the wussification. I'm not done. There's the wussification of baseball. Now, technically, Rob Manford was the deputy commissioner when the Buster Posey rule came in. 
but he was the real commissioner when the Chase Utley rule came in. So no more taking out the catcher, no more taking out the second baseman. The only physical plays in baseball removed from the sport, total wussification of baseball under Rob Manford's guidance. He also is a wokester. He forced the Cleveland Indians nickname change, encouraged that. He also got political, removed the All-Star game from Atlanta based on what many people said at the time, and it's been proven were a bunch of lies about certain voting laws in Georgia. And so he took the All-Star game out of Atlanta. Uh, wait a minute, there's more. He had a player make a racist eye gesture in the dugout during a World Series game and didn't punish him during that World Series. He waited till next year when no one was watching. That's cheating Astro, Yuli Gurriel. However... The biggest stain on the career of Rob Manfred to this point. Who knows? He could add to this by 2029. Like a mob boss, he protected and failed to punish. He ran interference for the cheating ass. One 1,000, two 1,000 holes from Houston. He allowed scumbags like Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, George Springer, and all the rest to bask in the glow of a tarnished title, and then had the chutzpah to call the World Series trophy a piece of metal. That's the resume of Rob Manfred. And you're telling me you're going to let that guy go till 2029? The guy's a disaster. All right, furthermore, where will the next commissioner come from? Where will Major League Baseball turn for its next commissioner? So I would advise you to not hold your breath that they're going to go get someone who's actually good. Now, the easy way to do this, there's a couple ways to do it. You, you go out and hire some intellectual, some college president or someone that worked for the FBI back in the day or something like that, or some political hack. Uh, but I did put out some feelers to try to get the pulse of what's going on in baseball, some of the people I know. The buzz early on, it's very early on, is that baseball ownership is merely going to follow what we call the cell phone plan, friends and family, that one of Rob Manford's underlings – and there's a couple of them that are already under consideration to be the next commissioner. The owners want to continue the status quo because Manford uh, does their dirty de- dealings and makes them a lot of money because he'll sell anything. He'll put a price tag on anything. It doesn't matter. They're wearing like uh, replica uniforms now in big league games. Uh, the owners want to know what to expect from the next commissioner. They want someone they can control. They want someone that they can groom for the next couple of years who's like the sock puppet of the industry for them. And they're going to get that. Whoever the next commissioner is is going to be a sock puppet, just like this commissioner. All right, parting shot. Let's actually get down to some of the transactions. Headline from Anaheim, and the free agency period not over yet in Major League Baseball as Scott Boris, the super agent, holding out, trying to get someone to buy his overpriced merchandise. Now, the Angels have been brought up here recently And they have been mentioned as a team to watch for big-ticket free agents such as, bro, I'm risking my life, Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger, who was a stiff the last couple years with the Dodgers and went to Chicago and played well, and even Jordan Montgomery, who's bounced around as a starting pitcher, was with the Rangers, the World Series champs last year. Now, uh, we are told that Mike Trout's team is also kicking the tires on Michael Lorenzen, a pretty good starting pitcher who was with the Phillies, and had been with the Tigers, I believe, as well, and some others. And so is it true? Is it true the Halos are contemplating a last-minute shopping spree? As uh, Snoop Dogg says, for shizzle. Uh, It makes sense because the, the Angels were absolutely upstaged by the Dodgers. They like to call themselves the Los Angeles Angels. They don't play in Los Angeles. They play in Orange County. It's 40 miles away, 35 miles away. But losing Shohei Otani and being stuck in the doldrums, right? What do you do? You're depressed? Retail therapy. They got money to spend. They can also get a blue light special because these guys are likely going to have to sign short-term contracts and then re-enter the market, whether it be one or two years down the line. But retail therapy is a great way to shake out of a little depression. The the Angels could put a sneaky good roster together, right? Sneaky good roster together. Now, I am not a supporter of Blake Snell. 
Uh, and there's a reason that teams aren't interested in giving him what he wants, even though he, he won a Cy Young for the Padres last year, because he's apparently a douchebag, and he's at the age where he's injury prone. He doesn't throw that many. And he's, there's, there's a there's a method to the madness here with Blake Snell. Like the the belief is in the industry that whoever signs Blake Snell is going to have that pitcher on the injured list right away. We used to call it disabledless back in the day. Uh, that's another thing Rob Manford has overseen. Uh, no longer the disabled list, yeah, the injured list, or whatever it's called now. Uh, change that up. 